What's going on, family? It is your boy, Marcus. Welcome to the Fanpreneur Podcast, where we talk about everything family business and entrepreneurship. Of course, we have we had to bring in an icon in here today. Okay, this woman here. We don't look when we bring women to the podcast. Y'all know I like to say it's women empowerment season right now. It's the year of the woman. All right, and I had to bring somebody that has been literally changing the game. I mean, from like from 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 a person who thought that she was somebody to I didn't even there was no thought. I am and I am the being. I am one. Okay? So, I want to go ahead and introduce y'all. Chelsea, I don't even want to I don't want to butcher your last name. So, I want you to say it for the audience, all right? Please introduce yourself. Hi guys. Thank you so much, Marcus, for having me on your platform. I'm Chelsea Goriello. Um, thank you because no matter how many times I tell people how to say when it goes live, it's just like, oh, they forget. So yes, Chelsea Goriello. I'm learned with Chelsea on all social media platforms and yeah, that's my name. Okay. So let me make sure I, I pronounce it correctly. Goriello. Yeah. Beautiful. Goriello. Okay. All right, yeah. that's new. Where, that's the, what name is uh, that from, though? It's the Sicilian side. Sicilian side. Yes. Is that a, is that Italian? Yeah. yeah. Mad respect. Yeah. I love Italian, so it's all good. Oh well, thank you. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Thank I love it. <laughs> that's dope. So tell the audience, like, what do you do? How do you serve them? Help them out here. Also, my name is Chelsea Goriello. I am a mother of two small toddlers, and I run a home-based business. Um, it's no longer uh, a family-based business, but it is still a home-based business. Um, I started entrepreneurship seven years ago when my ex-fiance came home from prison, the father of my children, um, and I felt very, very obligated to try to find a way to keep him off the streets, um, to keep us you know, going down the right path, and I wanted to help just create a foundation for us to start a family, and so that led me down lots of rabbit holes but essentially I discovered e-commerce and I discovered drop shipping which changed my entire life and has allowed me to become the entrepreneur that I am today the woman that I am today um, I now have several streams of income and I credit all of them to me just betting on myself to become an entrepreneur seven years ago through drop shipping because it opened just so many doors and it's allowed me to now teach other people through my experiences through my knowledge um, and it's just been the most rewarding, amazing experience. So I now have thousands of students all over the world, um, mainly women, but you know, we help a little bit of everybody. Um, you know, we're just on a mission to help a million moms discover freedom, financial freedom, time freedom, location freedom, so that they can spend more of their precious time doing the things that really mean something to them. My family is everything to me. So I know that Every I know I would like to think every mom feels that way and I'm just on a mission to try to help expose e-commerce and this opportunity to as many women as possible. That's dope. As Thanks. a son that my mom is trying to hop on here to, to say um, she was a single mother at one point. Now she's remarried. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that she'll be able to heavily um, understand that story. Um, she will give you a little bit backstory of herself. She made her first million at 30, lost it all racial type of situations, right? They didn't like a, mm. a black woman with, with a lot of money in, in the high mm. range. And then from there, she built it back up. Right. But now we're going on the family business aspect of things. So no, being able to share that experience with her, I definitely can relate, um, relate to that, but you, but you still do have a family business. I don't know why you made it seem like you don't have a family business. A family <laughs> business isn't the, isn't the, isn't always the fact that you have a husband and wife dynamic. It's the fact that you actually have a family. 
Do you get what I'm saying? The family could be a cousin, could be a mother. I guess I just thought a family based business would mean like the kids one like are have uh, positions in it. The husband, the cousins, the sisters, everybody's working together. It's really me and my team. My team is my family and they do. I would move them in if I could. So they kind of are here all the time, kind of 24 right. seven. So, yeah, I guess I do run a family based business. Have a family business. But, That's what I'm saying. Uh, no, we're connected through love. How, how, and old, how old are your kids? Two and four. Right. So, I mean, this is what my mom did, right? When I was younger. So she had me cold call at the age of eight and public speak at the age of 11. So you have a family business. You're nurturing oh. them at an early age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I, I definitely, you do have a external family, but you also got an internal family too that you're nurturing right. along the way. But yes. like I, I, I saw from your paragraph though, um, and I've been doing some research too. Uh -oh. But you were a celebrity uh -oh. makeup artist. Yes. Yeah, so that was my jam. That's really what I thought, you know. I really hi mama. Oh, she's here. Hey hi. mama. Cool. I was trying to get on. I was hearing your story, and I'm like, I can't get on. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing fabulous. There we go. I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, you know, and be on late. I've been trying for literally 15 minutes, over 15 minutes to get on. But it's an honor to have you here, Chelsea. I was listening to your story, single mom uh, with a couple of beautiful babies, went into um, doing e-commerce as a way to make additional money and to help your, you know, ex-significant other. So um, and Marcus was trying to tell my story, being a single mom, be, you know, but I did remarry. So I was listening, but I could, you guys couldn't see me or hear me. So I apologize for that. But um, I'm, I'm loving your story because I definitely know how hard it can be um, being a single mom. Um, do you have boys or girls? I have one of each. My two-year-old is a boy and my four-year-old is a girl. Oh, so you don't have big ones like I do. Okay, just wait. <laughs> Just wait. Woo, child, not ready. Not ready. This, this is very new for me. I'm a new single mom as of six months. So um, before that, I was engaged. Uh, we were together for seven years, and we've no, he's been my, he's actually my longest friend that I know. So we were best friends for eight years before we got together. So yeah, we've known each other, been in each other's lives a long time. Um, we just, you know, decided to go our own way this past December. So just adjusting to all of that, the kids, um, myself, you know, just everything. It's just been a huge adjustment in 2023 so far. Um, but you know, you got to keep pushing, got to do what you got to do. Um, got babies so it's like you know we can't really take the breaks and then the mental health days that we really need so you know we appreciate it when we can get it and just got to keep pushing you know so that's why i really have a soft spot for women as a whole and just empowering them because we just go through so much like oh my gosh if it's not one thing it's the next when it comes to relationships when it comes to just life in general i feel like sometimes so just trying to navigate it and keep my head up high held high be an example of you know what's staying focused and what's staying disciplined and what you know all of that can kind of you're a mom just you're a mom. young mom i remember i definitely remember at the time i was actually married to their dad um, he was a young mom. I mean, I was a young mom then. And just just the fact of your world, and I won't say no longer exist because everything revolves around them. As a mother, we just de de have different innate things that are different for us because of the nurturing aspect. Uh, me having two boys were a little bit different. You have a boy and a girl, which is what I wanted, but I got two amazing sons. Um, so I'm that boy mom. And uh you know, look, I'm I'm so I miss them being the size that you have um, as small children. I'm not going to lie. It's crazy when you're in it. You're like, oh, I can't wait for them to get older. But as they're older, you miss for them to be younger. But what I will definitely tell you is it's been an absolute honor to be in business with my sons. Um, you know, I've, I introduced them to things, you know, their father and I pretty early uh, because didn't want them to have that one mindset of, go to college, get a job because things were already shifting. Uh, Marcus was born in 94. Well, guess what? The internet had just came out in 1994. 
Okay. It was AOL dial up. Okay. Yeah. So, so they don't know anything else, but that life. Okay. Of internet and everything. And, and, and I, you know, and I'm hearing that you're saying, you know, Hey, you're a new mom. Okay. And that in itself, being a single mom is hard. Uh, cause you can't stop what you're doing. You can't go and be like, I just need a break. You, you can't do those things. And the kids need you to be at your best at all times. And, and that's not always plausible. It's great to have a support system, you know, if you can have that support system. But the way people live now, we're in incubations, incubators, meaning we're in our home by ourselves, you know, with our kids closed off from the world. The plant scandemic did that. OK, so it made us stay at home so much that we're not interacting the way that we're accustomed to interacting with people. And then sometimes you possibly feel that you are bouncing off the walls like, OK, what's going on? Because you got two small kids. But I'm here to tell you, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. The kids, the babies, um, kids mean billy goat. So my mother would really be on me if I kept saying kids. The children um, are definitely an inspiration. And they're, and they're, when you're down, guess what? It'll be that moment when they run up to hug and kiss you and say, mommy. And you're like, you got that energy all over again to keep on pushing. Yes. Okay. To keep Thank on pushing. So you're a mom. You have an amazing business. You're helping other single mothers. What about the single dads? Do you help the single dads as well? Because we've got a lot of single dads out here now. I do. I have some amazing single dads in my program over the years who have who have had the, I say courage because I've learned over the years of just being in this position of helping people. A lot of men are just, I don't, I don't want to speak for them and give the excuse or the reason why they don't choose to work with me. A lot of men show interest in working together. Together. I don't know if it's maybe the price point. They don't want to invest in themselves. Who knows? But I'm very honored anytime a parent, a father, a man decides like to invest in me to learn from, I take it like with a badge of honor. So it doesn't happen very often, you know, out of the thousands of students we have, maybe maybe 50 men total over the past four and a half years. Hey. So, <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. You know. And and it's interesting that you say that. Now, how many people have you helped? A lot. I mean, we. I think that you know, help is a is a really broad term, right? I feel like my social media alone is such a helpful resource for the people who would never be able to like get that that next level interaction with me. Maybe um, like. Everything I do, I, I strategically try to make it as impactful and helpful and valuable as possible, even going live on Instagram. So I feel like when you really look at the numbers and look at the access and the reach that we have, I feel like people have been helped from me presenting my story and being transparent about the things that I've gone through, even outside of business, like before business was even on my mind. I think I've been helping people just through my my real life situations. Um, but when it talk when it comes down to getting money, um, I I have a lot of people enrolled in my program. Um, so I would like to thank a lot of them. That is that is absolutely amazing. Um, I can definitely tell. You know, there's so much passion. You know, as we watch you on you know your social media, you give so much love and passion to your audience of just your willingness to really want to help as many people as possible. And that's why we were so honored that you said you would be a part of the podcast today. So I have a question for you. Um, as a mom. You know, as a business owner, when you are creating your stores or even when you're teaching people to create their new e-commerce, what are the first steps that you would tell a brand new person that's trying to start their business? Mm, the first steps is I feel like as an online business owner and a marketer, um, the easiest way to become successful when you are trying to have something to sell to the masses is to find something that can solve a problem for someone else. And this is just how I think as a person, not even a business person, but just when you can to lead with value in life, naturally people are going to gravitate towards you, even if you don't have anything to sell. You know, if you just want to be liked, 
as a person, if you find a way to help other people, everybody's going to like you. And I think I just realized that very early. And so now coming over to business, I've just adapted that same thing. Like, yeah, I might not care if you like me, but I want you to like the product that I have to sell to you. And the quickest way to get somebody to like something that you have to sell is to sell something that can really alleviate a problem for whether it's, you know, helping them solve back pain problem or helping them through a heartbreak or helping them sleep better at night. When you can help something, somebody with a problem that they are really struggling and suffering from, um, your store is going to have a bigger chance of success right out the gate if you're focused on selling products that can help alleviate tension for someone. That's actually amazing. Relieving tension. Okay. Solving that problem. So the number one is solve a problem. And be and be likable. Tell the story, right? As to why someone would, you know, why you're doing this particular product. Okay. All right. Um, Marcus, did you have another question? Because I actually have another question for. Her. Oh no, go ahead. Do your thing. Single mothers rule the world. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, and I apologize because I didn't get a chance to um, hear where you, what part of town, what part of the country you're from. I apologize for that. I'm in Vegas. Oh, you're in Vegas. Oh, so what's hot over there? Oh, y'all yeah, hot. It's one thirty over there. I think it's one o three. I think it's one o three, and it is hot. Oh, you said one thirty. Thirty p.m. Right. And it was one hundred and three degrees today. Oh my god. It is hot. Oh, oh yeah. Not, How do you stay so beautiful? Because you definitely. Oh my goodness. Bad. in the shade in the AC covered that's called in skincare routine. That's the best part. <laughs> okay so one of the other questions that i want to ask for you when a brand new person is starting an e-commerce business outside of solving a problem some people are very introvert and they don't like to go online and this that and the other you know because in order for you to sell your product you got to really talk about it so what are the best ways for a brand new person who is trying to establish an e-commerce how do they get the message out about their product what do they need to do? Do they have to go on live? What are some of the suggestions that you would offer to some of those introverted individuals? That's such a great question because honestly, like I feel so fortunate that I was led down the path that I was led down um, by God, because it's not like anybody else showed me this opportunity, but God, but it just so happened that I am an introvert. And this opportunity, the way it came to me, it's like I was at the library, like I was reading a pamphlet of opportunities that you can start from home. And I discovered drop shipping, which is the one I fell in love with, the one that eventually made me happen dollars and it just so happened that it's so perfectly suitable for people just like me and just like what you just described like the people that like to be inside the people that weren't really trying to be popular trying to be seen 24 7 trying to you know talk and have to be all personable all the time that's not for everyone you know and i'm very adaptable i can do just about anything when it comes to money and, and providing so i can step into that front and center um you know have to be seen person to get my money you know but i feel not most comfortable behind closed doors in my comfort zone and my element so drop shipping is the perfect solution to those who aspire to make money and they want to be business owners, they want to be bosses, they want to create something bigger than them, but they're not really worried about like being the face of it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people really just want to get into business because they like the idea of their face being on a billboard. That doesn't necessarily, that doesn't make you a business owner though. Like that doesn't even mean you're going to make any money. You just want to be in business so you can see your names in lights or, you know, you could be signing checks, but you don't even really want to run the business. And then there's other people that are just, they really aspire to, to figure things out, problem solve, put websites together, do the logistics, the build something from the bottom up, but they don't want their face all over. They're, they're chilling. They want to be in the background. And that's people that heavily thrive in the industry of drop shipping because you never have to show your face. You never have to do anything like physical, uh, physical labor type. You never have to even leave your house if you don't want to. The beauty of drop shipping is you can do it from anywhere in the world and you never have to show your face. So what we do is if you find a product that, you know, you feel comfortable or confident to sell, you can order a sample of the products and then the, you let your product speak for itself. You let your, your professional 
website speak for itself. They don't care if you're black, white, if you're a felon, if you're this, if you're that. And for that reason, we were able to thrive because nobody knew if it was a man, a woman, a felon, a this or that behind that website. Nobody yeah, knew. Yeah, you come out from jail to jail. It don't matter, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> right now making millions of dollars a month and they're selling beauty cosmetics this and that and they're run by 19 year old boys that are drop shipping so you know it's an yeah. it's a beautiful thing when you see the possibilities that we have in 2023 um and on the internet you know just to be able to connect us with so many millions billions of strangers that can potentially be putting more income in our pockets like it's amazing. So it's really good to explore those things. Even if you are introverted, things like dropshipping make it very possible to thrive. You said something important because you're saying 19 year olds are doing this and making million dollar months. So with the new technology that's out right now, chat GBT, the AI technology, are you using that to help in your dropshipping business? 100% in my online businesses all across the board. I think you're missing out on a huge piece of the pie to not implement those types of systems and components into your business because it only makes it easier for you, less, you know, le less legwork for you, honestly. So when it comes to like um, website des uh, product descriptions, that's what's been the most helpful to me uh, personally is and also coming up with like strategic ad copy for your ad campaigns. Um, you can use AI that, and it's going to tell you, you know, what is connecting with different people in that. It's just, it's amazing what this technology is doing for us. And the more we can tap into it, you know, there's AI that allows you to build out a whole website in five, in two minutes, you know? So, oh, I forgot the name of that site. It sure is a site that lets you do that. There's the grid.io, I think is what it was called. I'm um, the one right. that there's been several. Um, I've given my students kind of a recent update in my mentorship with like AI software that e-commerce people can really benefit from. Um, but yeah, there's just so many. I feel like there's a new program every day that's released and technology is right. quickly. It's like you got to get in. On Trying to keep up, keep up with it has been like, woo, it's because it's so overwhelming at some point, but yet it can take you to a whole nother level. Okay. Um, I got another question for you when it comes to your drop shipping business. Do you do regular Shopify or do you just concentrate only on drop shipping? Because there's two different components. And I keep hearing drop shipping is dead. So evidently, Chelsea is like, no, it's not. So what's what's the battle between selling your own product versus sell, drop shipping a product? What's the difference between the two? A lot of well, people are confused about that actually do both on Shopify like on you can see a Shopify store and unless you're like a savvy marketer or like you know what's up like that same website can either be drop shipping or they can have a whole warehouse like you don't really know when you place that order you don't know if right then and there if it's coming from the warehouse in my backyard or in my storage unit or if it's coming from a uh, overseas manufacturer and it's not coming to me at all you really don't know unless you know what to kind of look for on their website um gotcha. But Shopify, I stand by Shopify all day as a pl as a hosting platform for websites. I've made millions of dollars with Shopify and I'm not a techie person. I'm not a developer. I'm not a computer geeky type of person at all. And so the fact that I find comfort on their platform, it's very user friendly. Their customer service is, you know, beautiful. They, I've had these people up at with me at two, three in the morning. Just hi, is my website OK? Like. <laughs> Uh, you know, like they're amazing and you need that as a new business owner, especially um, you really need that extra reassurance. Sometimes you really need that extra hand holding sometimes. And before I could afford a mentor, every life thought I was going nuts. Literally, they thought I was losing my mind. I was on my path to entrepreneurship. And so sometimes just talking to the Shopify experts and hearing that they thought my website looked nice was enough to help me go to sleep at four in the morning and feel like I was good. I did enough with my day, you know? So I stand by Shopify. Um, exactly. Is though like, what is the difference between inventory and having like product on hand of something versus drop shipping? making sure that I understood your question. And I think what you might have been asking me is like the difference between having your own per like branded products where you have inventory somewhere right. versus 
I kind of teach and emphasize the importance of as a new marketer, a, a new business owner, it's very dangerous to start a new store, a new brand and say, hey, I'm going to go spend $10,000 up front and purchase, you know, 5000 uh, You know what I mean? Like a lot of my students have come from that are investing very heavily on physical merchandise that they have absolutely no experience selling, you know, none. They've never effectively sold it. But in their mind, they're just like, I know I can sell that lip gloss. I know I can sell that lip gloss. And next thing you know, they're dumping all of their savings, all of their 401k, all of their inheritance, whatever, into this inventory that expires, that goes out of style, that you know, all types of stuff happens. And next thing you know, they're sitting, you know, they have a garage full of lip gloss that they can't sell as quickly as they expected to sell. So I've heard enough of those horror stories. Crazy you say that. <laughs> it's yeah, so it's crazy you say that. Because I, I got some product now. <laughs> so, it's good, product you know, right now. A lot of people, you know, the thing about drop shipping, what it is, is um, I don't really consider drop shipping a long term play. Not that it can't be a long term play, but I don't, me personally, I don't use it for that. I like to use drop shipping as a way to test an idea, to get validation. Mm -hmm. That there's a real demand for that product and that I can effectively sell it because I'm just, a, I, I'm a risk taker, but I'm a calculated risk taker. And if I can get mass right here by starting off conservatively, then I have no problem starting off slow and steady because slow and steady wins the race in my eyes. So I'll start off slow and steady until I can get my feet wet and, and, and prove to myself that this is something I can actually effectively do and create an ROI at a small scale. Once I have that validation that I can sell this lip gloss as a drop shipper without ever having to invest five, ten thousand dollars up front. Once I can effectively sell it without even having inventory in my possession, then I know I'm onto something and then I'll feel more confident after I've made a hundred thousand dollars drop shipping, then I'll go ahead and spend five thousand on wait, wait. wait a minute, hold up, hold up. You slide a little stuff in here and thinking that the audience don't know that. First of all, you said you made millions. Then you didn't say, well, if I didn't make 100000 I'm like, wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So you are a seven, eight-figure earner in dropshipping? I'm a seven-figure. OMG. Guys, are you hearing this? No, 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 no. Pause. I think there's, let me make sure there's not a delay. I'm a, not an eight-figure. I'm a seven-figure online business. Okay. Owner. So, yes, I made my first million in 2020. Can you hear me? We're good? Yeah, you're good. Uh, you're good. I'm like, no, yeah, we're good. It was a delay. Yeah. Yeah. No. And um, yeah, it was a delay. As a drop shipper, I made a little bit over five hundred thousand. It was like a five, around five hundred and fifty thousand mark in revenue with my stores combined. Before I was like, wait a minute, it really dawned on me. I'm like. You know, it's not so much about all of the different products that I've sold because as a drop shipper, I effectively sold a lot of things. I sold mugs. I sold I've sold a lip gloss or two. I've sold jewelry. I've sold like a lot of things that I didn't give two craps about. Like literally, I, I sold things that I never cared about at all. And then I realized like, wow, I could really affect I could really um I can really sell something that I like. Like I can really effectively sell. But why am I selling things that I don't care about? I, I can sell something now I care about. And so once I realized that, you know, my business, my success as a drop shipper, it gave me the confidence to feel like, wow, I have something purposeful to share with the world now. Like I am my own product because I have something I can actually give to the world now. Before I didn't really feel like that. As a makeup artist, yeah, I did have something to share with the world and I charged for it. But it was it was a service still. I was still having to go to your house, do your makeup. I felt like more of a worker. With this, I, I, what I had to share was in my brain value like real education and information to share and so that's when I realized like wait I can be my own product just like that mug and I sold a hundred of those um you know I said a hundred k I was just throwing out like random examples is what I was doing earlier about make a hundred k and then reinvest it into your brain but you know I realized at that point in time that 
the product can be anything. It's the marketing and making sure that you can get visibility to whatever offer you have in your in the marketplace that determines if your brand is successful or not. And so once I realized that, I said, you know what, I'm going to put drop shipping on the back burner. Yeah, I still have it. I'll always have at least one store because it's easy. There's no point not to have a drop shipping store. I'm, I'm so in tune to what Chelsea's saying. OK, because I've been, you know, I've been an advocate Shopify person forever, Marcus, and um, could definitely attest to that to the point where we've helped one of his o- older friends. She became a person who started selling online and she became a millionaire because of some of the things that we taught her. And then, of course, Marcus used to sell a whole bunch of stuff. I sell stuff. So it's just great to be able to it was just drop shipping that I wasn't really the best at. You know, and like you, you was like, I, I have to have something I feel passionate about to to kind of sell, so to speak. But then again, there's so many products out here that anybody could sell that they have no passion about and they're making millions of dollars. So as a family business, you know, because that's what we are, we're a family business. What would you suggest or what we, where do you say a, a family should start if they want to start their own f- online drop shipping or shop? business, what would be the first thing outside of solving the problem and how much in outside of taking something that's small, testing it first, what are the, uh, what is the one thing that they can do to really kind of get started? I think that they can leverage each other to get exposure for their brand. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of different things. If you have high school and middle school students, um, just creating the awareness in your child's mind at an early age that yes, while we're consumers by nature, you know, we're going to Walmart, we're buying school supplies, we're this, we're that while we're shopping for these school supplies and letting our kids see us spend money. It's also just as important for us to educate them on the other side of it too. Cause we're business people, we're bosses. Okay, baby, why do you want that Barbie over that Barbie? Is it the packaging? Is it because she's white, she's black? Is it because she has blonde hair, black hair? What is it about the positioning of that product that made you gravitate towards it? And if we could teach our kids how to be producers versus just consumers. Yes, I think that... Mm -hmm. That's an amazing thing. And what it allows them to do is then go to their middle school. And, you know, just like back in the day, it was the kids selling the chocolate bars. Those were the producers. And look at those kids now. They're either in jail for producing more than chocolate bars or they turned into like real entrepreneurs and sold some real good things, you know. But those it's kids funny you to- say that, Chelsea, because, yes, it does seem like the kids that were. You know, but, but let's take it back. Even when the girls were Girl Scouts, we were selling the Girl Scout cookies. OK, or some of the young folks that are selling their CDs, you know, they were selling CDs and stuff. So you'd be it's, it's amazing how we started out doing this when we were kids. They would give us candy in school, those chocolate bars to sell, and then they'll give us cookies. And it's like that made, you know, like with Marcus, his whole thing is, you know, with Marcus and Alex, you guys got to know how to talk to people. You can't be afraid to talk to people. OK, and like you, you're going to be teaching your babies the same thing. Absolutely. I would love Chelsea. I'm not going to lie. I would love for you to be at our FamCon this year because Aww. to be. I mean, to help families like seriously yeah, help families. That. Oh, that would be absolutely amazing because the, this is where the problem is. We're entrepreneurs, right? We get out there and we do our thing. I'm sure during the uh, plant scandemic, you made a lot of good money, just like we did, okay? But the people who work jobs, who were counting on those checks, and you know, and they went to school, they went to college, and they got their job, and then they weren't working, they were like, what do I do? Yeah. What, what do I do? And to be able to show them a great alternative of saying, look, this is still viable. E-commerce is happening no matter what. Okay. Everything is shifting. You have an opportunity to get in now, especially with fed now and all this other stuff getting ready to come in a couple of weeks. Okay. That everything is changing. So it would be great to be able to have you do that, but I'm going to turn it over to Marcus, you know, cause you and I Chelsea could talk all day. I oh, kid you not. <laughs> no, no, no. 
So I'm like, like, I'm feeling left out. He feeling left out, Chelsea. That's nah, what it is. I'm not feeling left out. Look, I said more power to you. All right, more power to you. I just got some quick questions, though. I got some quick questions. So I want to pivot real quick to, well, actually, I want to talk about this first. You mentioned that you were an introvert, mm-hmm. right? Um, but you're, but most people who are introverts don't really put themselves out there as much as you do, mm-hmm. right? So like what made you, what, where, where was the shift where you were like, this is where I need to be an extrovert and actually do things that make me feel uncomfortable? Um, I was part of my healing journey. I didn't think I knew it was me healing. I think that's just what got it started is that I just needed to talk about things a little bit about my personal life. And once I did, just seeing how people gravitated towards it and people embraced me for it, it made me feel comfortable enough to be like, okay, this is actually what is necessary because people kept seeing me as like this girl who had it all together, this pretty girl on social media who had all these celebrity friends because I was a makeup artist and they just thought it was all glitz and glamour and everything was always together and nobody knew, you know, I had escaped a domestic violence situation that really almost cost me my life. They didn't knew, know when I moved to LA, I was living in a motel for months by myself, scared, by, like cr- crazy situations because I left that abusive relationship and had $2,000 in my pocket. And that was supposed to last me until I could land a job in LA. So um, luckily God led my steps in the most beautiful way. And I met some amazing people who directed me and helped me and opened doors me and life transpired to be a beautiful reality within you know a short period of time I got connected with some celebrities that put me on their tours and just amazing things happened and um you know all the while you know having people who knew me from the abusive relationship who knew me from that point of my life are watching me like literally just take hold of my life and and go in a new direction and be okay and talk about it. So that's really what um, I think I, I, I was still very introverted, but I was feeling like I know I can't be alone right now. I know that I'm not the only woman who is starting over after an abusive relationship. Like I know that I'm not the only one who feels this type of pain. And so just talking about those things um, was so healing for me. And then it easily led into when people started seeing the money transformation, you know, I'm no longer, it was just like a totally different, level up and people started asking questions. Now I had a little bit more of an audience. They were more connected. So it didn't seem so intrusive for people to be like, wait, you're not always talking about money or this anymore. Like now you're talking about finances and income and multiple streams of income. And yeah, I could still be a makeup artist, but guess what? I'm still getting my money on this website too. And so people ask me like, wait, you're on tour right now, but you're posting Shopify this. Like, what do you got going on? What are you selling? And right. I'm like, it, it makes it so intrigued. They're, they they yeah. become like so intrigued because you, when you do keep talking money, 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 they're like turned off because everybody's talking about money, money, money. But when you give them your own personal journey, that's an altogether different story. Exactly. And that, that's, that's what drew us to you, Chelsea. It was oh. like, you were telling us, Story. No, seriously. You know, I'm I'm in a really weird place with that right now because this is the first time that like I, it's so raw, like everything I'm going through, it's so current that for the first time in seven years of being a business owner, I'm like I'm at like a a gasp for my own situation because I'm normally so vocal about it, but it's like way too raw and still in it that there's still too many. Um, not even raw emotions on on my part, but it's just like, you know, it's just one of them things. I don't know. I guess when I was talking about the abuse on social media, I had already lived it, survived it. I was talking from a very empowered place. And right now, since I'm literally still in it, trying to navigate it and figure the whole thing out, it's very hard to talk on it because... I'm not the expert at all. And I'm used to speaking from the expert angle of something and and helping people figure it out. Um, Or because now I'm like, I'm a fish out of water. Like I need someone to help me tell me how to do this. I need to take a class on how to 
whole fucking month. I'm like, no, sorry, but it's crazy. It's just, this is a different angle for me. So it is harder to be like on social talking about what this is for me because it's just like, but I can't even. But you said it's a healing process. So the question is, because you stated at the very first when I first got on, mental illness. Do you think you battle with mental illness because of some of your situations? Mental illness? Definitely not. I don't think I battle with that. I think um, I think my battle now is just getting like discernment. I think that now being a single mom and having two children that I'm responsible for, and now I only have two sets of two eyeballs instead of four eyeballs. Like now I have to be so much more mama bear protective mode. Like we used to have a man protecting our house. We used to have a man protecting. If there was a creek in the middle of the night, I didn't have to even turn over. You got it. Like now it's like, <gasps> what? What the fuck? <laughs> 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 that is like, I'm calling the fire. Like, who's like, that? Yes. Um, it's only me. I got the My G wagon right out front. It's gonna sit right here with the hazards on. Y'all are not about to kidnap us when we walk into the parking lot. Like I am paranoid. Okay. I don't. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> you know. So. But you are doing. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Stop saying you don't know how. You're doing it. Yeah. You're, you're doing, you're it. doing it. It's all, that's what I was saying before when you were saying, you know, the family business part. I'm like, look, it's already done. At the end of the day, the family business is done. You know what I mean? So I want to talk about the celebrity makeup artist. I want to talk about OG Chelsea real quick. I want to talk about OG Chelsea. What what made you shift from celebrity makeup artist to I want to create an online business like where was that pivot like where wh- who introduced you to drop shipping who introduced you to um you know shopify's online business like how did that start yeah so first and foremost like i'm so thankful that the whole makeup artistry phase of my life happened because one i was super passionate about glam and makeup and celebrity and hollywood glamour all of that was just like in my blood since i was like a little girl um, and I appreciate my experience being a Beverly Hills makeup artist for a minute as well, because it gave me the experience that I needed. Um, I started my makeup career in Atlanta and even though I had a couple here and there, um, I can't say that it ever gave me the exposure to feeling like, wow, there's more out there. I, I was doing strippers makeup in Atlanta, so it wasn't really introducing me to anything other than check when I when I the caliber of clientele changed it allowed me to pull up with my little bucket car to some mansions in Beverly Hills and to some parties and jets and this and that that I had never ever been accustomed to before and so here I was for the first time in my life like it took years though it took years before I ever connected like wait they're a human and I'm a human they have a mansion. I, I do if I just right. want to go for that, you know? It took years. I was a makeup artist for like eight years before one day I really realized like, wow, you're not just a celebrity. You're a woman. I'm a woman. Hold mm-hmm. on. Hold on. We could both do this. So I just had to get control of my life and I had to ask myself like, what side of the tracks are you trying to be on? Like, yes, you might have started on this side, but you're just moving this mm-hmm. way not ever trying to move this way to cross over and then up you're just going in the same side of the tracks and you're moving up Mm -hmm. but you're not crossing over and I just I decided one day like no I'm gonna make that crossover like I need to figure out how you know me and Cardi B are both from the Bronx or me and J-Lo are both from the Bronx but how is it that I'm still in the trap and they have made it out what is Mm -hmm. nothing's different so I just had to embrace the fact that like we all have that within us and we, I just had to tap into it and so at the same exact time that I was kind of having that itch to pivot my life and I was very confused I didn't know what direction to go in my family anytime I talked to my family about it the only response they ever had was college more college more education that's literally yes no oh, use your why don't you go be a paralegal how about a lawyer college go back for six more and I'm like what 
are y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Like, I want freedom. Like, I want wealth. Mm -hmm. I'm rich. Like, do y'all not get what I'm saying? So I realized I couldn't keep talking to everybody about my goals yeah. because nobody was understanding where oh, I was. Oh, no. Going. They would shoot you down. They would shoot you down, Chelsea. It's, it's, it's crazy because I walked my own beat for a long time from Chicago, been in Atlanta for 33 years, always wanted to be in business for myself. And everybody was like, why you don't have a job? Like, look, I've traveled the world and done more than you have ever done. And you still on your job. What do you think? OK, when I was getting ready to buy, you know, our home, you know, um, at the time, the dad and I, we were divorcing. Um, we were separating, actually, at that time. And I bought my house. And it was like, you'll need that big house. You'll need that big truck. You'll need this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I can have whatever it is that I want. What, what are you saying? And so you can't let other people in their we cannot allow other people in their jealousy or their insecurities about what it is that they don't have stop us from getting what we want because they'll try to keep you in their existence. And that's not, you know, like when I said, guys, you want to go to Dubai? And they were like, yeah, I said, okay, we're leaving in a week and a half. They were like, what? Yeah, let's go. I mean, to be able to do these type, do those type of things with your family, you know, it's like, and and I remember on our first 100K month that we did and, and Alex, and, I'm, and I hate that he's not here, but um, Alex, his brother, my youngest son, one of his friends, his mom has this perfect job, okay? Perfect job. He had it and his friend had everything he wanted. And we were like, no, we're not buying you guys, you're teenagers, you're not getting all this name brand stuff, and you become superficial, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so he thought that his friend his friend thought his life was everything. Okay, that he had everything, this, that, and the other. And I remember him coming home one night and he said, Mom, he said that we're not gonna do a hundred K in a month. Because he's used to his friend, mom, their family working a job, but but when pandemic happened, what happened to her? So let me just roll it back, okay? And he said, "You're not going to do that." And, he, and I said, "We can show him better than we can tell him." So when we hit that hundred k month, because he was in total disbelief. See, it's it's the thought process. It's what you think. It's what you think. Like you said, J Lo and you are from the same spot. You and Cardi B are from the same spot. What is any different from you than them? Nothing. It's just your desire to do. Yep. 100%. So I want to kind of pivot one more time, right? Because you had said that, um, you know, you have this seven figure business, you're running it, you're doing your thing. You, you have your shop on the side, you, you know, you, you got you got your kids now. But so like, how are you like, what does your team consist of now? Because you have you have kids now. You're a mother. You can't be tapped in like you used to be. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to you got another attention to, to pay attention to. Right. So for the people who are, are are wanting to start a business, like what are some team structure? What are some structures that they need in their life to make sure that they're good to go? So I definitely can't speak for everyone because, you know, it'll be different. Some people have family that they can ask for help. Um, their moms come and play the role of everybody, you know. So I don't my answer might be like a little if it might feel a little extreme, but I really had no help. You know, I have no family on this side of the America. So it's like um we, for me, the biggest thing, and we had these things even when I was in my relationship, but um, the thing is my kids weren't in school. When we were together, my kids were home with us and it felt very much more family business like what you were saying. Even though my, my ex had his own consulting company um, and I had my company separate, he would be in his room. I, you know, every now and then we might be in the same room, but it's like he did his thing. And our kids were just running around in the process, you know, getting nursed at the same time, baby food getting made, you know, and then I had a nanny as well. So I always had a nanny since I had my kids. We we incorporated that right away. And that was everything that gave us at least a little bit of something for ourselves together and separate. And that was critical. That was very helpful because, yeah, I was already a business owner and I knew I would need at least a little bit of that balance. Um, but today, now that my kids, we are separated and 
you know, I was left with the, you know, with that, um, on me, I, I, I didn't last. Um, I think one month went by where I was just like, okay, I wasn't ready to let my kids go to school yet. Like mm -hmm. in my mind, it wasn't going to happen anytime soon. I loved the idea of my kids being up under my nose and my nanny and all of us here. It just felt like a tribe. It felt like a little village. And right. when he, it really was just like, oh my God, like I was forced to put them into school. Luckily the school's four minutes away. I could literally run there if I had to, but it's just, I wasn't ready to let go, but it's fine. You know, we, we were all adapting and it, it's turned out to be a great thing. It's healthy for the kids and blah, blah, blah. But it was just like a lot to cope with. Like everybody yeah. just did you on. cry? Oh, did yeah, you cry? Yeah, of course. It's just like, oh okay. By everyone, like, oh my god, he's gone. I'm back in this house. The house is empty. It's like, where are my kids? Like, this is not what I was ready for, you know. But it's fine. It allowed me to like get back to focus on the business and like what I had to do. Um, my team, um, I have kind of like my personal team, and then I have um my business side. But the personal, without the personal, there would be no business. So I have a housekeeper. Yeah. I have. A and I have a nanny and they make sure I'm fed. They make sure I take my vitamins. They make sure I wake up. <laughs> um, well, they make sure I take a shower. Done, you know, they make sure there's toilet paper and baby wipes. You know, they keep, they literally allow me to not have to worry about the dumb, petty stuff that anybody can do. Like they, she, they handled that part because honestly, like I wish I could be more of a homemaker mom right now, but now I'm the provider. Now I'm the boss still. So it's like, if I had to pick, yeah, if I had to pick a role, it's not going to be to worry about the vacuuming. And, and if we have baby wipes, like somebody else can account for the house. Right. Exactly. Right is money for everybody to eat <laughs> or none of us have a job or a house or cars or anything. So all that stuff I had to outsource and delegate quick. And now my team consists of my executive assistant Steph, which is who's y'all been talking to majority of the time and amazing. She's we're literally my right hand. She's with me all the time. And then aside from that, I have like my social media team who helps me with all my content creation and posting and things like that. Um, and I have my operations who help with all the tech stuff because I'm not a tech person. So now we're at a place where I can finally just show up. And I'm not going to lie, a lot of times I'm not even able to show up how I was before. We used to go live three times a day. We used to do four podcasts a week. We used to on it for other people, not my podcast, but like I would be a mm -hmm. guest. Now there's days where I just don't even have it in me. I'm like, listen, y'all got it. I'll be out, you know, two hours before you clock out. Like I need it. I'm just not, I'm defeated. You need, like, downtime. Yeah. You need that mental. Yeah. It's a mental downtime that you got to have. Okay. Cause it's like when you're running, go, 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 go. And it's, it's, it, you know, and I try to tell my sons and my husband, look, I need you to just leave me alone. It's not because I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah. Don't come in my office. <laughs> don't talk to me. I don't want no hugs. I don't want no kisses right now. I just, 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 just stop. If if the curtain is closed, that means don't come in. Don't call my name. Nothing, right? Because we tech, we as women, it's different for men. Although men go through their stuff, okay, but it's different for women when they have children. OK, it's different for when the woman is the backbone of the husband is different, you know, or their significant other. It is still different because we're the ones we're like the glue, so to speak, because the men will still da -da 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 and go. OK, and then you're like, oh, you got the kids. I mean, not that they're not a part of the kid's life and not, not that they're not engaging with them, but it is still on the mother. It is still on her. So that's where the mental, where we have to have that time where we have to have somebody to talk to. So when they be, when they, so when they be talking about girl power and girl tribe, it's real. But men got to have it too because they're going through their own traumas. They're going, look at the statistics of men that are in jail. You know, you know, you know my brother's in jail. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that. You know, so it's like they have their issues, too. So we all got to come together and communicate with each other without, you know, yelling and this, that and the other, you know, respect each other's space and time, 
you know, so we can come together. And, and people always ask us, how do y'all work together? <laughs> you know, because we all have very different personalities. OK, but we do pretty good, you know, because yeah, we listen to each other. Lean into the 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 good things that each of y'all possess and you amplify those things, you know, where one is weak, the other is strong. And Correct. You know, I love to see when families can make it work. Um, for us, I do feel like, you know, us being um, aspiring business owners mm -hmm. at the same time and being at that same level, we both had such a hunger and a drive to become successful in our own right. Um, yeah, we wanted to do it together, but I feel like he was just very resistant to the idea of that. Everything I wanted to do was family style. I wanted a YouTube channel. I wanted this, this, and that. I had like the whole vision. It was easy, easy. And it's not even that it was like an easy play, but it was an easy play. Like, you know what I mean? Like I had right reasons for doing it. It was all honest to God, like genuine intentions, but it was an easy play. And to like fumble that or to deny that or reject that, I lost so much respect for him because I'm just like, you're trying to do this by yourself and I'm trying to tell you to come on. You're not in the streets no more. You're not this single man no more. You are a father of three kids and we can go together further than you can ever go by yourself. And I can show you 100%. better. Than now 100%. I'm and, and it but if that's that's a mindset. That's yeah. that's that's truly a mindset. And I have a good a good friend, um C, she's dealing with the same thing. He just got out. He was in the halfway house for a minute, you know, and, and his mind is still in the streets, street wise. And I'm just like, baby, you got to let it go because that's not for you. You're trying to move in one direction and he's moving in a different direction. You know, so we, I'm going to have to have you on my podcast when we talk about that, because you got to allow yourself to heal. And uh, again, like you said, you're still very raw in it because, you know, it, it's it's not easy to go from being with somebody for seven years and all of a sudden saying, you know, that person's no longer there. It's almost like a death. Okay. Yeah, it's 100% that. Um, I know, you know, I keep hearing that. Um, I know, I know you're right at the core of it, you know, cause it's like, Oh my God, how can you experience something like this and not need to heal? Like, I mean, and I don't know, maybe it's just the unhealed part of me that just has this like wall up, like I'm fine. I'm fine. Of course, it'll always be like a sad thing especially because of my kids and because of like the long history that we have. But I feel like as like for me to have gotten to where I'm at right now at 35, I feel like I've been hurt. I've been, I've gone through so much to get where I'm at that like, not to say I'm meant for this or I'm made for it. Cause I'm not this. It, it, it has brought me to my knees at times. I'm not, I would never ask for any more of this, but it's just like, what does healing look like? It's just people, the nature of people now, I've just, I, I don't know if I ever want to trust the same way. I don't want to be that healed to where I'm back naive to the things that, you know, and, and when people hear that, sometimes they're like, oh, you, you just need to keep healing. But it's just like, bro, that healing space where it allowed me to let my felon best friend in because I thought- To be vulnerable. To be vulnerable. I, yeah, to be vulnerable, I don't know. It, it's a hard thing because the more I do it, the more I'm proved that other humans right now are just not, they're not healed. Like, I feel like I'm okay. And I just want to keep giving love and helping people. I'm okay. I heal every day through my audience. Like other people don't get that and they don't understand it. If you don't have an audience or if you don't have a brand, like I'm not going to put it all on that, but like they keep me solid. Like they keep me like, it's like, I invest in my personal development the whole seven years I was with him and he was listening to rap music and all into his gambling and all into his stuff. I was focused on my personal development reading. I was talking to like-minded people who were square, you know, and like too square for him to care about. Those were my people. And that's what I was in my time. I was talking on Instagram to people who were crying with me about real life trauma that we overcame, not sitting here telling war stories about prison and, and da, 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 da. that's not that that's unhealed to me. So I feel like I've been healing and that's what made me want to leave my relationship, to be honest. So it's hard when people are like, oh, you, I do. I know I need to heal because I'm heartbroken. Yeah. But I also was uh, detaching from someone who I realized God didn't want for me 
a while ago, but because of my kids and because of our finances and the lifestyle we built, I was trying to hold on to it, you know, because it's like, who wants to just give up everything? The life we built together. Right all over. Correct. And, yeah, and but, so, I, you know, and not to put my son's business out on blast, but I'm gonna put him on blast anyway. Right. Um, my business or somebody yeah. else's business? I'm about to put your business on blast. What, what, wait a minute. Uh, what business what, are we talking what, about? What I can say is I'm very proud of him because right now his number one focus is to work on himself. He consistently reads on a regular basis. He is always in his, you know, constant working on his body, working on his skincare, working on his inner core. That's both of them. And and I'm like, because before you can give yourself to somebody, you got to be whole. You can't expect to give yourself to somebody and you're not whole. And the thing is, you're sitting up here talking about healing. You're healing on a consistent basis. What you, you are the epiphany of healing. So you got to give yourself a little bit of credit and a little bit of grace because you're doing an amazing job. Otherwise, guess what? You could be in your room under your covers with your sh sheets over your head and, and worry and bills not getting paid, the stuff getting cut off, you know, so you got to give yourself some credit and some grace that you are healing that you are going to the next level, that you are doing better. And that is the reason why people are so, you know, re you know, resonating with you. Cause it's like, wow, I'm going through that. Even with Marcus, it's just like, man, look, you know, you went through some stuff and look how you are overcoming it. You know, so these are things that, you know, even with my other side, Alex, even with me, even with my husband, I'm very transparent about my current husband and his issues with getting addicted to pain medication. I'm like, look, we're human. Nobody is perfect. OK, nobody is perfect. One of the reasons why you get into certain situations is because our circumstances put you there. OK, it puts you in that position so you can do what you're doing. So now you, Chelsea, are able to help somebody else because of your story, because you are healing. Okay? 100%. Be proud of I yourself. Try, I might try to make this a therapy session, but- I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I don't want to make this- This should my podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, this, this is good. Funny. He is funny. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm, you know, uh, I'm just saying, like, this is, this is, this is, this is getting deep. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's, it's the fact of life, though, because people always want to only talk about, Marcus, you and I know, all they want to talk about is I'm making money, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But then they're not talking about behind the scenes, what's going on with them, what's driving them, why is why they're doing what they're doing. It's like, what's the backstory? What's the real deal here as to why we're doing what we're doing? What was the real deal? People would never know. And that's why I'm in a phase now where it's like growing my team and figuring out like how I want to pivot and what next step. Like I feel like more than anything is we need documentation of what's going on right now because I'll be fine in a few months. Like it's going to be water under the bridge and I'm going to have this whole thing down to a science, you know, but I don't want to be that person that is only representing perfection. Like, no, it, none of this. I'm saying like at all, this is a beautiful disaster. And I know I still have a lot more than most people and blah, blah, blah. But like, I want people to see what goes into becoming a woman of power, a leader. And it's the things that we go through, you know? So for me, I've been wanting to um, really like have a production team. I'm trying to like figure out how document this and like what to do like he he was never really supportive of the whole youtube family channel so now i'm kind of like oh my god do i have the capacity to like do it on my own right now i don't think so right this second but it sucks for me because i know that once i do have the capacity i'm going to be in a much different mental element and it's not going to be as ugly as it is right now and that's what i'm kind of sad about but it's just like, whatever, whatever God wants it to be, it'll be. And I feel like, you know, I just want to be someone that can also represent not the struggle, but the, the good, the bad and the ugly, because I know this right here, what we're going through right now, having to like pull my team together and be like, listen, I know you're my assistant, but I need you to go help me pick up my kids from school. I have a class at 530. I got hundreds of students. Like, can you please go take them from McDonald's after school to keep them out of the house? Like everybody stepped up for me. Like 
everybody stepped up for me. It's like they knew what was on the line. And it's just like, I'm so grateful for all of that. And that's the stuff that other people will never get to see. Instagram doesn't see what we're doing and dealing with. They don't see behind the scenes. They don't see, the scenes. They don't see us up late at night, you know, trying to put a presentation together. They don't see us up late studying, you know, to get the information out properly out to our mentees. They don't see that they're sacrificing money that's being put behind the amount of money that we spent on mentorship to make sure that we get to a certain level so we can make sure that we're training people the right way and not giving them incorrect information because we've done all the work for them. We've, we've done the work that we sat up here and said, look, I made the errors. These are errors that I did. So now, you know, I'm just going to give you an example so you won't go through the same error in your business. But people think it's all a money grab and it's not a money grab. It's the sincerity of, look, this is where we were. We were in a situation. We were about to lose our home. You know, my husband was in a treatment center. You know, the kids was in college, but we found a way and, my, and the term is make a way out of no way. And guess what? We can show you how we did it. And that's what you're doing for other people. You're showing them a way out of no way. That's so, that right there. So, so that beautiful disaster, that's what your show should be about. Yes. Beautiful disaster. That's the, you got the that's, title. The that's, yeah, that's, I love that. A eh? because it kind of <laughs> ties to it too. I like that. See, yeah, that that is. That is. that's like that's that. that's what I'm good for. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm, I want to pull it out with the <laughs> tagline. Okay. okay, everybody put that inside the chat. Beautiful disaster. Okay, I gotta pay homage now. It's, 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 I'm <laughs> done. I'm done. I will hey. say that hiring a production team for your YouTube channel is needed. Yeah. It is needed. You get you a fire videographer and that videographer is your editor or you could separate them, right? Then you have a person that's a graphic designer that does your thumbnails. Then you got a, uh, they may, this, this is a preference, but maybe an SEO person. And then what do I always have? And a copywriter, you good to go. Yeah, yeah you good to go. That's on because autopilot. I think we need to write that down and, and find it and just make it <laughs> But honestly, I th when we first moved to Vegas, I just remember being really turned off because that was the plan. We got the chef. We got the house. We literally got everything we needed to start a YouTube channel. And the, we interviewed two people and they came in talking about like 30,000, like something insane. And I was just like, a month? A month? Like it didn't even get that far. We, would, we just wanted them to come in and shoot a trailer of our YouTube video and like, but oh. everything by minutes and like oh okay well it's gonna be a a 10 minute video means we got to be here for an hour worth and by the time we cut this this and that yeah that's like x amount of money i'm like that just doesn't even seem realistic like what so they charge 15k to do our course yes they charge us fifteen thousand dollars but it's like twenty thousand it's like twenty thousand now you, you gotta also understand the time that we're in right now too we are in content season attention yeah everything so they're charging an arm and a leg just to put out a reel or a one minute video you get what i'm saying now i will say that thirty thousand for a trailer is od that is a little bit that is a little OD. yeah I'm not, it gonna, is. I'm not gonna lie to you like, when we did a whole course for that yeah you could you could have a videographer for about two three k a month he could also edit your videos you that person can also upload your videos to your page then you could have a graphic designer chopped up yeah, right, and it can be chopped up. up. Yep, that's all. Everything that the videographer does, and he'll and make. This is a preference. You could either, if you find a really good videographer, he could also be your photographer at the same time. But you could no. separate those roles, right? Then you could have a thumbnail person. That's max a thousand right there. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. Like, um, for a really good one, for a really good one, uh, you could have a copywriter for like five hundred, all in house. You don't need to like go out and get it like this in house. You know what I'm saying? I say six, I say six fifty seven hundred on yeah, that copywriter. Or, or, I say if you want to be fancy, a thousand for a copywriter. If you want to get a real fancy one that really get that has SEO experience, that has the copywriting experience, that had that can also do your emails, your copy for your websites, all that. But are you mm -hmm. saying this for a YouTube channel specifically, or for? Yeah. Social all your media stuff in general, social media in general, and they will also do your YouTube channel. So if I'm paying somebody something, you get what I'm saying? 
I don't want them to just do my YouTube. I need you to also yeah. do my Instagram. I need you to also do my my TikTok. TikTok. To repurpose it. I need you, this is is I'd say everything. Now threads, <laughs> you know, it's for all of it because again, just like you said in reference to your Shopify and your drop, uh, that's what Chat GBT. So if they're smart enough and they're using that AI a little bit, then it can be repurposed to be on that particular TikTok, that particular YouTube, that particular now Threads, Instagram, Facebook, you know, so it, all of that can be repurposed from one video that they don't film with you. So like our guy was here six, eight hours for that day, did all of our content. We changed our outfits, repurposed it, chopped it up, you know, and that's how you get your content out there like that. So, cause I would be exhausted like this right here. This is going to be chopped up so many times. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. You're right. Um, yeah. Like YouTube, where we do shorts, we do reels, we do TikTok, we do all the things except long form YouTube content because the team that I have, I I see my I see my content for a YouTube channel being like a different caliber. And yeah, that, for sure. Like you a know, reality show in a sense. Yeah, yes. And I just mm. don't know how to direct that or delegate that. I need that person to come and tell me what to do. And my team yeah. isn't, they don't know. That. Oh, yeah, so. if yeah. If you're coming in, if somebody's coming in for that, honestly, an experienced person, I'm telling you because I, I, I was a videographer, I was a video editor. This is what I did, right? And way back when, that's what I, that's that's OG Marcus, right? But like, yeah, you got a music video, honey. Yeah, we're not going to discuss none of them. That's that's <laughs> too OG. That's too old. That's that's a little. That's OG OG. We talking like pre that, but like. I went to, <laughs> I went to school for it. So like those type of situations, if you're looking for somebody on that type of level, it's going to range you about five ten a month. I'm not even going to lie to you. No, I mean, of the age that we in. Yeah, no, I feel like I'm paying um, around the five range without YouTube as like the main plot, like the long short form. That content. sounds about right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm flexible in, in all of that, but I just needed, it needs to make more sense. I don't, I'm not a YouTuber yet. So it's like for, yeah. I mean, like 30,000 for this trailer. I'm like, yeah, that's well, so deep. I needed help with like the structure of like, okay, we'll be here X amount of days. Like what's, you know, but it's just different now because it's like, you know. Was me, that, that, was, that was only for one video? It was just for, I just know the the project of the trailer and the numbers were just astronomical. So I just never revisited yeah. it. And I was just like, that's either. He came with like red cameras, like all the different cameras and all the different stuff. You don't stuff. need none of that. You don't need none of that. Get you yeah. You can do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Not, we, we, when we come to visit you and you come to visit us, we'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need all that. You don't need all that. I'm just like, you, you know, I figure out like the structure of like, okay, if I am going to record, I didn't want it to be scripted. I wanted it to be in my natural element. I wanted mm -hmm. it to be real. Ace family. Well, I can't say I wanted it like those channels because they're all so scripted. So I don't, scripted, yeah. that, but the aesthetic, I loved the production style, quality style. Um, but I just, yeah, you know, I just want. Well, you've been on No, if you're dealing with celebrities and you were doing the makeup back in the day, you yeah. understood that. You knew what to look for. It's like, well, this is the quality that I want. Yeah. I don't want that particular quality. So yes. that's the reason why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Because it's I like, oh, no. No, I don't want that. Yeah. Oh my God, we could be talking all day. I, I, I'm just like bugging because this has just been such a great interview. Well, you know, it's been for Pussycat Talk, so we're gonna put this on Pussycat Talk too. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. It's just been. It's always great to be able to have somebody on who's genuine who's just, you know, straight up and say, hey, you know, it's not always glamorous being in business, but it's rewarding at the end. And that's what's important that it's rewarding, you know, especially when you're doing it for your family and that, you know, you can, you know, when you're doing it together, you know, you're doing it for the babies and the babies are looking at you and they're proud of you and they're like, hey, mama, you're my hero, you know, and, and you're not hero, she -ro, all right, because that's that's the way they're looking at you, that mommy can do anything. Uh, I know Marcus used to say to me when he was in college, mommy, how you be finessing money? Oh, she queen finesse. Like she queen I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> queen finesse. It don't oh make no God. sense. I'll say... 
this, you know, broke college student days. I don't, I don't, like we we know how this goes, right? We we ask for some money, and then they say, "Hey, we don't got it." And then five minutes later, they got it. I'm like, "How you get it if you didn't have it the first?" Time? <laughs> <laughs> it makes so fast. I'll be without a school now. <laughs> oh my! I'm God. just saying. Oh, you be finessing money, Ma. How you be finessing? Like, hey, I'm gonna make a way to no way. You ain't had the money, and then for some reason, not only did you have the money, you gave me more money. Um, <laughs> where does it come from? But no, yeah. I appreciate you, Chessie, for hopping on here. It is dope to have somebody. I feel like the values align, so I think I guess it's really, really dope to have somebody on here that uh, that is killing the game. Not only killing the game, but teaching the game. So, Thank can you, you tell the audience? how they can reach you, how they, how you can help them, how you serve them, and et cetera. So follow me on now threads, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, learn with Chelsea. It's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. And if you are looking for any advice, any guidance, any help at all whatsoever, um, you can just DM me the word webinar and I have been hosting pretty religiously a free training um, weekly that will really break down. It's live. So part of me getting out of my comfort zone and just committing to just like getting the word out there to a million moms. You know, I don't have to necessarily work with a million moms, but I want to just make sure I'm exposing this to as many women as possible. So I'm committed to doing a weekly webinar for now. So hopefully by the time this goes live, we'll still be doing that weekly webinar. But if you DM me on Instagram, the word webinar, I'll be able to send you the free link and just come with your notes, come invite your teenagers, your brother, sister, whatever. It's a good time. And I just want to break it down so that anybody and everyone can really understand why this is such a magical opportunity. I'm so grateful. It's completely changed my life and made all of these things possible to even talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. I never would know anything things had I not, you know, dipped my foot into entrepreneur waters. I'm so grateful for all of it. Um, I'm grateful that it's allowed me to become the woman I am today to take care of my children. Because if I was like the majority of women in America right now, depending on one stream of income and a husband who decides to leave one day, you know, that's why so many end up in a much more unfortunate circumstance. So I'm so blessed that I continue to develop myself and invest in myself and just stay front and center in my own life to make sure that I was becoming the best version of myself possible as a mother. And I never saw this coming, you know, but I'm grateful that if it had to happen to me, that I at least have equipped myself with the tools to be the type of mom that I know God wants me to be. So my goal is to just help as many other women feel empowered to know that they got this. It's not easy, but you got this. We can stand together and we can make it happen. And so, yeah, connect with me on social media. I would love to help you guys out. Thank you so much, you guys, for having me. This has been amazing. I've never talked about this type of thing. You know, this is new conversations, you know. So I'm grateful that you guys are one of the. We bring that out in it. I, you know, look, when folks get on our podcast, we bring it all out. Can't okay. It, man. We a family. We, we family. Family. So we, we, people love. They just feel as always. Um, wait a minute, guys. Again, don't forget to follow. Learn with Chelsea. C H E L S E A. Learn with Chelsea. Don't forget to DM her the word webinar so she can help you guys out on drop shipping and all that good e commerce stuff. But no, people love to. They love to just tell us everything because we don't judge. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's a very relatable conversation. Um, so I'm sure, you know, now that this is my reality, I'm sure going forward, all the podcasts, you know, like the conversations are now different. These podcasts, be, you know, all about my family and how much I love them and want to do this with them. And so now it's definitely a different angle. I still want all of those same things, but I think it's, it's a new, a new perspective that, you know, I'm touching on, like I said, new territory. So I'm glad to be able to connect with moms from all angles now, you know, not just the ride or die mom that's helping her man stay home from prison, but also the one that is forced to do it on her own and is holding it down, you know? And again, make a way out of no way. So Chelsea, I would love for us to stay in touch. Honestly, I really do want us to stay in touch. I will and definitely follow you and everything. <laughs> Look, y'all, we appreciate you. Look, this is what family do. 
And this is what we're about. We appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in to another podcast, especially the episode of the Fanpreneur Podcast. And we will see you in the next one. Thank you. Peace out, y'all.